this is Kayla with Live Oak Nest. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here today. So I want to share with you how to make this cutting board decor. So this is a DIY wooden riser and it's very simple to make. It's perfect for a table centerpiece um, or to put on your kitchen island to create just a beautiful spring vignette. These also work year round. They're really beautiful to use. So let me show you how to make your own. So to get started, you need just a couple of items. You need um, wood glue. I like this Gorilla Wood Glue. You need a couple of these wooden um, candle holders. They're from Hobby Lobby. And then you're going to need some chalk paint or mineral paint and um, some wax or some polycrylic to seal your piece. And then of course you're going to need a cutting board. And I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It's part of their spring line. So it was 40% off. So I think it was $6.99 at checkout. So that's all we need um, to make this project. So the first thing we're going to want to do is glue on all of our little legs to create the actual riser. Um, I put a generous amount of this wood glue around the, um, the top part of the candle holder and then I'm just going to set it down on um, the cutting board. And so to kind of clean it up and make sure that I have wood glue um, all around the base, I'm just going to use a paintbrush and wipe around um, the candle holders to take off the excess glue. So once I have those really smoothed out, I'm going to take something really heavy. I have this really big book and I'm going to place it on top of um, the candle holders and let it sit for at least 30 minutes to an hour to help the wood glue dry really well. So you can see the wood glue is really dry. There's a couple of gaps in a few spots, but don't worry about that. We're going to fill that in. A little bit later but this piece is good and sturdy and so now I want to go ahead and get it painted so I'm using um, fusion mineral paint to paint this and this is the color putty so I'm going to um, put a coat of paint and cover the top and bottom So now that I have everything painted and it's good and dry, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of latex caulk and just fill in the seams around um, all of the little legs to just kind of give it a finished look and I think it also help, helps hold everything together a little bit better too. So you saw that I used wood glue to attach my little legs. You could use like E6000 um, if you wanted to. I've never had any problems with little legs falling off and I've made several of these so I think the wood glue works perfect but if you were um, planning on really jostling it around you could use the E6000 to just keep it a little bit more secure. I like to keep my 
finger or whatever I'm using just a little damp when I'm applying this it just helps it go on a little bit smoother and then I like to kind of clean up around everything with just a damp paper towel Now that that's all finished, I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth out um, the cutting board. So I'm using 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly, um, lightly sand down the cutting board and then also um, distress it in a few places. And you want to make sure that the top is really good and smooth, especially in the center where we're going to be um, painting on our stripes so that your um, when you paint the stripes, your paint doesn't leak leak underneath the um, tape. So just try and get it good and smooth in the center where your stripes will be. Once you have it sanded, use a damp microfiber cloth just to kind of clean it up. The microfiber cloths work great to just pick up all the little dust um, from your sanding. Okay, so I'm ready to mark where I want my tape to be so that I can paint on my stripes and make sure they're centered and straight. So I'm just going to measure um, the width of the cutting board, find the middle point and get that marked. And then I'm also going to mark in, I believe I did a half an inch on either side of that center mark. And that's where I'm going to line up my tape. And you could if you wanted to mark this all the way up, um, but I just marked it in one spot and then eyeballed it. Uh, to make sure that I felt like it was it was straight enough. <laughs> you want to make sure too once you lay your tape down that you really smooth out that inside seam because we don't want any paint leaking underneath the tape or you'll have to do um, touch-ups and it will just look better and give a cleaner look if you can get it on there really well um, and not have any paint leak underneath. So I'm filling in um, my tape sections and painting on my stripes with Fusion Mineral Paint and I'm using the color Raw Silk. It's just a creamy white and it's a really pretty color and I think it'll look really good um, with this, this gray putty color. I'm using a blow dryer to just kind of speed up the drying process but I'm putting between two and three coats down um, before I peel off my tape. And then I'm using my blow dryer to dry it really, really well, especially this middle piece where I'm going to need to overlap the tape on top of it. So a blow dryer works great. Um, just use it on a warm setting and make sure that your paint is really dry before you move on to the little side stripes that we're gonna make. So I'm going to do the same process to measure. I'm just gonna mark the distance in between the stripes that I want and then I'm going to mark um, the outside of this stripe so that I can put tape on either side of my little lines just to create my guideline for my paint. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did for that center line. Smooth out your tape on the inside really, really well so that you don't have any paint leak under your tape. And then I put two to three coats Use my blow dryer to make sure it was really good and dry before I removed the tape. Removing the, the tape is my favorite part. I love seeing how perfect that line looks when you pull off that tape. Okay, so once that side is good and dry, I'm going to do the exact same thing and we're going to make our last stripe on the other side.
Okay, so there we have it. We have all of our stripes on. Um, you can see that the seams in between the legs and the, the cutting board are filled in. I did apply another coat of paint to the bottom and around the seams just to cover up any sheen um, that was left from the caulk. So that's finished. The last thing that we want to do is get this piece sealed. Um, I am going to use this General Finishes Flat Out Flat Top Coat. I love this product. It is a true uh, matte finish, which I think with polyacrylics is hard to find, especially with like Minwax or polyacrylic, the brand polyacrylic um, sealer. They, no matter if they say that they're matte, they tend to leave a certain sheen. Um, so this product is amazing. It's really flat and it doesn't really leave brush strokes. It levels out really well. So I'm going to apply two coats of this product and you want to make sure you do a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper in between your coats. And I just did two. If you're, if this is going to be a really heavy use piece, um, you might decide to do three. So once your um, sealer is good and dry, you're ready to use your new DIY cutting board riser. So here I just have it set up um, as part of a centerpiece, but I just love how this looks. I love the little feet because it gives it that extra layer. And then I can use a runner um, to run underneath it, or I can drape a tea towel off of the side like I have here. I just think these are such sweet pieces and they're perfect for your vignettes. Y'all let me know what you think down below and I will see you again next week. Thank you.